So the first thing with its uh, pathway is it comes off of C8 and T1, so lower down on that, on that spinal column. It then travels through the brachial plexus and from the medial cords transitions into the ulnar nerve. There's no sensory or motor innervation above the elbow, but that ulnar nerve coming off the medial cord does pass through the intermuscular septum between the bicep and tricep. That's where those two heads meet on the medial side of the, fore, or medial side of the upper arm. It then goes posterior to the medial epicondyle. It travels under Osborne's ligament, which is a ligamentous structure around the uh, flexor carpi ulnaris head, and then it connects to that medial epicondyle and the ulnar collateral ligaments. It innervates flexor carpi ulnaris and the FDP or flexor digitorum profundus of ring finger and small finger. That's up high. Then it provides the dorsal and palmar cutaneous branches that come off of the proximal and distal forearm respectively. Those then pass down and provide innervation that we'll talk about in a little bit. Below that level of the palmar and uh, dorsal cutaneous branches, um, it travels superficial to the transverse carpal ligament at the wrist and through Guillain's canal at the hook of the hammy and the PC form. After the wrist, it provides innervation to the hypothenar muscles, and then the seven interossei, four dorsal and three palmar, two lumbricals to the small and ring finger, and then the adductor pollicis and the flexor pollicis brevis deep head. That adductor pollicis is a very, very strong adductor of the thumb and gives us a lot of function, so loss of that has significant implications.